Um, so I think Mark said yesterday that he is kind of a third category, so I think I'm a fourth category. I'm a historical phonologist and a, a philologist, but for the wrong languages. <laughs> um, so um, the goal of this talk, or the goals of the talks, uh, the goals of the talk are uh, testing the Bex's agar reconstruction using known words for uh, ancient and European languages, which will mainly be uh, Tocharian, um, since I'm a specialist on Tocharian, but also because most of the stuff seems to be uh, from uh, Tocharian or into uh, Tocharian when we look at the ancient time. Uh, testing means looking again with the new reconstruction at uh, long words that most of them have already in one way or the other been suggested and uh, I picked the raisins of the ones that I think that are uh, kind of that they will stick. Um, well, why Tocharian? Tocharian uh, is the European language that used to be closest to the speakers of Chinese as we will see at various uh, historical stages uh, which we will actually see in the long words. Um, the other goal is testing hypotheses concerning the geographical and semantic areas of European uh, and Chinese linguistic contexts. And um, so there will be a little bit talk, I will talk a little bit about cultural things and uh, just a little bit about archaeological things and uh, about where there are no long words, where people are expecting them. Um, these uh, are the European languages in their uh, old uh, distribution. Um, I guess I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. Everybody knows uh, in European. But you see, uh, the Karen, of course, is uh, the language most to the east. Um, almost everyone now in European studies agrees uh, on kind of this model. Uh, so Anatolian was the first <coughs> language to split off and uh, walk into the uh, into what today is Turkey, um, and to carry in the second uh, to split off uh, fairly early, uh, going into the Ural Mountains. <coughs> I think, so I personally think this, that these dates are a little bit too, too early, and um, I also think that uh, to carry <coughs> is much closer to the other languages than Anatolian is, and also there is a huge difference between Anatolian and the other languages, including Tukharian, but um, that's something that we can discuss later, uh, if you want. Um, what's to know? Uh, discovered at the turn of the 19th to the 20th uh, century, spoken from late antiquity into the Middle Ages in today's uh, Western China. Uh, the manuscript tale from the 4th uh, to the 13th uh, century was probably uh, to carry that out as a spoken language um, around the 10th uh, century. Um, so we have a lot of, uh, we actually have a lot of uh, dialectal variation this into carrying B, which is the bulk uh, of our evidence. Uh, identified as in Japan fairly quickly, uh, 1908. Um, okay, uh, it's of course in Japan, and uh, uh, I thought I, I put in a cognate set um, just. Uh, to, well, basically get me in, in, in a good mood <laughs> because coordinate sets in uh, Silo Tibetan are, are not that, uh, <laughs> that nice. Uh, if, if, <laughs> if you pardon me saying that. So, uh, the nice European language, uh, uh, I give you the three flagship languages, Sanskrit, Greek, and Latin, uh, and you have English there, and uh, these are all super coordinates. We have uh, nice sound changes that basically get you almost all the forms without any analogical meddling or any, anything else. Yeah. Good. Okay, what else is to know? So up until the mid 1990s, that's uh, kind <coughs> of a, a so sociological point, but that has to be made because up to this day, uh, Tocharian is the most understudied in European language uh, for the reconstruction for itself, uh, because most of the texts are actually not translated and a lot of the vocabulary is not understood. Uh, um, so, um, up until the 1990s, most manuscripts were almost inaccessible uh, in the hand of specialists that did not want to share them with anybody else. 
Um, this is anecdotal, but uh, it has to be mentioned. Uh, people published actually uh, papers saying, I read this and this word in this unpublished manuscript, and it confirms this and this theory about Indo-European. But nobody actually saw this manuscript. And usually people did, didn't even say what the actual word might have meant in the context. Uh, but this is how, how it used to be for, for quite a long time after, after the first uh, two decades that were, were just heroic, uh, in a sense, with uh, Sieg and Siegling uh, deciphering uh, the, the, the language and well, recognizing it as European and uh, publishing the first edition. So up until recently, only, f only a very few text editions. Basically, the best text edition that we have is uh, um, made by uh, Georges Champinot, Werner Winter, and Chi uh, uh, Lin, um, uh, the Maitreya Summit in Attica that they dug up uh, uh, in the 70s in, in Xinjiang. Uh, and that's, that's basically the only edition that you would call an edition. You have a text, you have a translation, uh, you have a glossary, uh, and you have the photos of the text. I mean, that's, that's great. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, only a very few useful uh, handbooks that changed drastically over the last decade. Uh, since 2011, um, there is the comprehensive edition of Tukarian manuscripts, uh, Keton, or Setum, if you prefer at the University of Vienna, where I'm uh, working. And what we do is basically trying to make all um, the manuscripts accessible to everyone. So they, they get glossed, they get translated. Um, when we can, we find the, the parallels, uh, 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 because most of the uh, two current texts are Buddhist in nature. Um, and so on. So uh, basically, even if you have no uh, understanding or even interest in Indo-European, you can use this web page to find useful data if you want. Um, and it's still in the process, but uh, I gave uh, um, a talk about the project one uh, year ago, and uh, there uh, I said we have 8,000 manuscripts now in the database, and now it's <coughs> one year later and we have 11,000 manuscripts, well, fragments, uh, in, in the database. So. Um, and there are still things being dug up in, in Xinjiang. So this is the oldest uh, to carry fragment. Um, calligraphically datable uh, to the fourth uh, century. Um, and also um, uh, people were allowed to, to rip a part off uh, and make a um, C14 uh, analysis and it roughly confirms the date, but C14 analyses are always plus minus 50. 250 years, so, but roughly confirms what the paleograph paleographic uh, data anyhow suggested. Okay, well, uh, most of you know this is the Terry Basin. Let's zoom in here. Um, so, uh, these are the main find spots. So, basically, the northern uh, part, what, uh, what, is, what was the old Silk Road and what seems to become the new Silk Road when we believe uh, the president of China. Um, <coughs> um, sorry, um, so that the red one indicates to carry A and uh, the um, brown one are to carry in, uh, B. And you see even, even from Endere, uh, and I think now there's even a manuscript from uh, Kotan. Um, so it was spoken uh, around the Terran basin. Um, why is to carry in important, even if you're not an Europeanist? Um, well, because Probably this guy was half uh, Tocharian. Uh, he was one of the most important uh, translators for, for Buddhist texts. And uh, this guy was maybe the most important of them all. Uh, um, uh, so basically Tocharian <coughs> played a vital role in transmitting Buddhism uh, from India to China and from Sanskrit into Chinese. Okay, so where do the Tocharians come from? That's the never-ending debate, and we don't know. But the theories are now, um, basically, uh, the Xiongnu um, started a fight up here, um, and the uh, Yuzhu, or Ruzhu, um, which was probably some confederacy of different uh, um, tribes, uh, moved up here. And why do we know this? Because we have Chinese historians, but also, when they reached this point here, uh, becoming the, the Kushan uh, Empire. Uh, we have also Western historians uh, telling us uh, about it. 
but uh, otherwise it's not. I mean, we, we can assume that there was some relation with this kind of migration uh, that pushed uh, to carries from either here or here into the tearing basin. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing all over again. Um, this is the Kushan Empire. So basically, the, they were pushed for the, the, the Roja were pushed from uh, by the Hyungno into, into this and established uh, this Kushan Empire. And this was a mixture of, as probably everybody knows, <coughs> Greek and Iranian and maybe Tukarian uh, people. And a lot of other people. So going back in time, what people in indo European now believe is uh, that uh, we can kind of pinpoint the pre proto tocharians with, with the Athanasiro culture. Um, yeah, I don't know. Artifacts don't speak, genes don't speak. So I'm always <laughs> a little bit skeptical with these arguments, but it should be mentioned. Uh, and actually, this is from a genetic, uh, from a genetic uh, paper. Um, but as I said, artifacts don't speak. <laughs> and uh, near to uh, mummies. Um, good. Um, there's a general uh, tendency now uh, in, in Indo-European affiliated uh, uh, circles um, to say, as uh, Kuzminia uh, does, in the Eurasian steps, metallurgy will transport and horse breeding go back to the fourth millennium BC. Northern Chinese population may have received metal, wheat, barley, wheeled vehicles, the sheep, and the horse from the Athanasiro tribes who uh, came from the west. The words for all these were borrowed into Chinese from Indo-European, presumably to Carian, um, quoting or referring to uh, 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 the, the famous Pulley Blank uh, paper. Well, uh, let's look at this. So, in European word for metal, chaos. The old Chinese word for metal, krem, copper, also chaos. It's to carry pilke, which means a uh, shining, uh, shining thing. Uh, old Chinese, uh, long. Um, again, chaos, also bronze, uh, krem, or uh, yong. Uh, silver, uh, hergento, this is actually, um, seems to be um, a kind of mingled outcome of this form. Um, and people have suggested <coughs> that these forms are related, but uh, I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> um, then the word for gold uh, that we have in Tukarin, the word for gold in Old Chinese, or for fine gold uh, in Old Chinese, and uh, I don't see any uh, relations here. Uh, if you do, please tell me, I, I'm happy to learn. Um, let's look at the cereals, wheat, uh, we have Gant, uh, which is Tukarin Kanti, bread, uh, murak, uh, maybe the other form uh, um, uh, murak uh, was also barley, I mean kind of a wheat, uh, but anyhow, the, there's no relation whatsoever. Uh, the sheep, uh, no relation whatsoever. Uh, the horse, uh, no relation whatsoever, but people have said, well, maybe it's related with this mark thing, and actually this is the, the, at the beginning of all uh, comparison of Indo-European and Chinese is one of the greatest philosophers of all time, uh, uh, Leibniz, uh, who already compared the, the what we have uh, as, as, as Meere um, uh, with the Chinese uh, form, but uh, this doesn't work. I mean, uh, of course, there's an M and there's an R and there's an M and there's an R, but that's not enough. And then uh, this word is special because it's only <coughs> tested in, in Germanic and Celtic. Um, so, um, yeah, let's look at the wheel. Um, <coughs> uh, so you see, uh, this is basically the tested wheel terminology. So wagon, wheel, um, axle, um, yoke, uh, etc. And you see, um, so Indo-Iranian has basically all this terminology. Anatolian has only this uh, uh, for the yoke. Um, and Tukarian only has uh, a wheel or, I mean, basically it's the word for wheel, but it became the word for chariot. So um, here you have this, this nice list from uh, Anthony and Rinch uh, with the most important 
um, words, so chariot, uh, wheel, uh, dexel, uh, I guess that's fill, if I'm not mistaken, um, axel, and uh, uh, convey, so transport in a vehicle. Um, let's briefly look at um, Chinese. So uh, there are these two words uh, for chariot, and um, maybe, 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 this can be from something in the Iranian. Uh, Iranian has chakra, uh, and uh, Sanskrit has uh, chakra, uh, and some protoform could maybe uh, give this, but if there's no other conclusive evidence, we, we can't really tell. Uh, Wheel, uh, room, um, uh, axle, l rook, then nave, cock, and here again, maybe, <coughs> maybe, maybe, uh, this is a shortened form of the Tocharian kokale, but then again, uh, from the meaning wheel or chariot to nave, that's not the best semantic change that I would come up with. Uh, beacon weight, uh, uh, um, drive Nras, uh, chariot here, uh, Bok. So uh, you can see there's no, not much in the European uh, borrowings going on there. Uh, as I said, maybe here, maybe here, but the evidence is not really conclusive. Um, good. Uh, now let's look at uh, real to carry in onwards uh, in old Chinese. Um, so this is also in, in Laurence and Bill Bo uh, Bill's book, uh, so um, this, this funny plant. Um, uh, uh, going back to Anguash, which itself is a long word uh, from Proto-Iranian um, or some older Iranian, Angu Chatu. Um, then there's the honey word. Uh, and maybe we have to discuss this later a lot. But uh, basically, um, there are two proposals. So me from uh, uh, Middle Chinese Mid, from Old Chinese Mid, uh, that's in, in Laurent and Bill's uh, uh, inventory, uh, or um, as uh, uh, Guillaume uh, suggested, uh, from Middle Chinese Mid, from Old Chinese um, Rit. Um, um, so uh, Guillaume would, would take it, which is ingenious, uh, from uh, Melit, which is not uh, tested directly into Karen, but which would be a nice Indo-European form. And uh, a pre proto to Karen Melit could give us the required um, um But I have to say, I mean, in my opinion, and it might be fundamentally wrong, but uh, a proto to Karen Mute uh, seems also possible. And uh, I, I could imagine the Chinese speakers heard what uh, proto tokarian actually turned into then. Uh, in in Tokarian we meet, uh, so if I hear a mute uh, um, as a Chinese speaker, I might uh, come up with mit as, uh, as my form. Um, but this would suggest that uh, the Tokarian ö, um, uh, which was kind of a bard I was a little bit different from the old Chinese ö, um, because if the both were um, uh, Schwarz, we would expect that uh, a proto, uh, uh, old Chinese form would actually be spelled with, uh, or spelled, pronounced uh, with the uh, uh, schwa. Um, then there's the word for arrow. Um, I, I was very happy and I thought, ah, yeah, I discovered a loan word by myself, and then I saw that Trisla already had it. Um, but um, I think um, uh, that's, that's probably uh, uh, right. So uh, Zain, uh, which is still attested into Karen as, as Zain arrow, uh, which in turn is from Proto-Iranian. Um, and so we see that, um, that the, um, basically the Chinese form uh, has to have come via to Karen, where already the change from weapon to arrow happened. Um, OK. this. This is actually my uh, fault. <laughs> um, there is this word, um, Kratz, uh, wound fabric. Um, everybody who, who wore a pullover made of, out of wool without nothing underneath um, can see the association of Kratz 
uh, uh, and it actually is is there in proto tocharian There's a kretzwe uh, or kretzwe uh, um, uh, uh, tocharian b kretzwe tocharian a kratzu uh, meaning rag, and probably as far as we can tell from the text, uh, woolen rag. Um, it occurs in a very strange context where um, Buddhist monks are um, basically be, they, they're told that uh, when they have special needs uh, they should use a rag uh, to satisfy <laughs> these needs. Um, yeah, that's the fun of Tukarian philology. Um, but it is related to, of course, to probably to scratch and German kratzen. Uh, which is, which is a funny thing. Um, good. This, uh, that's why here I made a, a, a question mark, uh, the goose. Um, well, maybe. The, the, at least one of the gooses, the, the, the gray one, um, that uh, a, a fellow Austrian Nobel Prize winner, winner uh, took a lot of pride and care in. Uh, actually was domesticated somewhere in the Middle East and gradually shifted uh, to, to Asia. <coughs> um, and <coughs> we would uh, probably have a pre proto tocharian form Konto giving Kente Us. Um, then we would actually have uh, evidence for an old O grade which would fit actually nicely with um, the Germanic data and also the Sanskrit data. Uh, so Hamza and of course our word for guns and goose. Um, but I'm not quite sure about this one. Um, all Chinese loan words into carry. Clue. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's an old one, uh, but that's a fantastic one, I, I, I think. Um, because it can't possibly be uh, from Middle Chinese. Um, so it has to be from Old Chinese, uh, and, and that's a really nice uh, thing. And uh, this could give us also the best clue, pardon the pun, uh, concerning the time and space of the linguistic contact between uh, Chinese and Tocharian speakers. Um, there are genetic, um, I'm not talking about mummies, uh, there are genetic <laughs> investigations on the rice uh, in Xinjiang. And uh, it seems that rice came to Xinjiang um, 2,000 years ago. But this means that the word was borrowed earlier, somewhere where the Chinese already uh, cultivated rice. And uh, I mean, the next, the closest thing I can think of uh, in, in, uh, in pre teen uh, times is uh, maybe Gansu. Um, and incidentally, this might also be the home of the Roja um, in, in the centuries before uh, the Qin the dynasty. Um, and then uh, uh, there are a lot of measures. This is one of them. Um, and they also, um, so to carry basically is, uh, it collapses all distinctions. So uh, uh, Proto-Indropian had uh, T, uh, D, uh, D, uh, and everything was collapsed into T. So basically they didn't care about, uh, about our uh, superscripts. Um, this example is nice insofar because we have uh, uh, these vowels uh, that uh, lead to this palatalization. And the palatalization of a T uh, in proto tocharian would give us a CH. Uh, and that's uh, quite nice. And this also confirms that this uh, thing is uh, Old Chinese because uh, this uh, thing uh, would probably end up as, as shak. Um, yeah. yeah, basically that's good. Um, but there's also this one, and the same thing, I mean, uh, Tocharian collapsed uh, uh, D and T. Uh, we have this, this palatalization uh, happening in, in proto Tocharian, giving us Chuck, and uh, again, the same, the same thing, this, this can, cannot be uh, from the middle Chinese form. Um, then this word. Um, <laughs> there, a lot of ink has been spilled about uh, uh, this word, um, but I think that we should actually take it from uh, Old Chinese in some way. Um, why would Proto-Turkic uh, Tumen not work? Because Tumen would probably palatalize the T in proto tocharian which would lead uh, to kind of Tumen and then in Tocharian B to Chame. 
uh, and we don't have these forms. And uh, some people said, well, uh, but we have the U, um, and it's true there are spellings with Tumane uh, in, in the ligature, um, so not, not a full uh, U, um, but when you actually look at the, <coughs> at the evidence, um, they are fairly late, so the oldest forms are, are Tumane uh, and Tumane. Uh, again, <laughs> another measure, um, to, um, I think it's possible when we, when we um, reasonably suggest that uh, the global stop, um, since it did not have a global stop uh, at, at the end of words, um, uh, they uh, substituted the word uh, and we would get, this would then lead to a probe to carry form uh, tau, which would exactly give tau uh, into carry. Um, then uh, from, from an old uh, calendar system with uh, RAP, uh, the 12th uh, month. Um, and this must be, uh, this must be from, from old Chinese uh, RAP. And also that's, this is, we can, we can lead a lot of discussions about these measure uh, words and, and, uh, and maybe someone will come up with a phonological uh, explanation that will contradict mine. But this seems also very old. Um, okay, uh, then I mean that's a little bit boring, but there are uh, Middle Chinese loan words into carrying, uh, so kai cover, um, cow um, bolt of unbleached silk, um, so cow white raw silk, um, then uh, chane um, from tian, uh, and not so. This is a middle Chinese form, uh, and uh, things are different here in the in the uh, phonology of Tukarian at that time. Um, then shank uh, again another measure. Oops. Okay, this was. Then uh, zum uh, also a measure. Then zen uh, blue um, probably. Um, this this is a class like this uh, would would probably end up, uh, uh, so are ending up uh, like this in, in Tukarian, so it, it, that's not, not a big problem. Then the word for sauce, uh, uh, tiang, um, it's also there, what else? Um, then uh, uh, this one, uh, tiang kun, um, from the, the <laughs> straight from the Middle Chinese, uh, shui yang, uh, grain tags, um, uh, also from Middle Chinese, um, sima, um, so the Marshall, um, then this is a, this is a quite nice uh, uh, thing. Um, so Tukarian doesn't have an, an age. Um, and I think that this writing suggests that this was already something like a, like a, a f, uh, like, like Fujiyama. Uh, um, uh, and they had the only way they came up with, because they don't have an F, was to write a strange H and a H uh, to, to imitate uh, the, the, the phi. <coughs> yeah, late, uh, late loan words are, are kind of like that because they can't come from, from the Middle Chinese forms uh, and they, <coughs> they look like imitations of things that are already very old, but I'm not quite sure how we can really, really get them to work, uh, so I'm, I would be happy about input uh, concerning this. And also Shao receipt uh, from Chao, uh, which also cannot really come from the Middle Chinese form. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs>